Why do students get bored? In education, this is a critical question. When it comes to student engagement, it's the driving factor in whether or not a student learns new skills and ultimately whether or not they improve their student affect, which means the student's confidence in the subject that they're learning, as well as their overall ability to build a foundational love of learning. Today, I wanna to talk to you about engagement. More specifically, I'd like to walk you through two areas of research that are critical in understanding what it takes to increase engagement and ultimately improve educational outcomes. The first is mastery learning, and the second is digital game-based learning. Mastery learning was originally introduced by Benjamin Bloom in the 1960s, and in that paper, he talked about his belief that the majority of students can learn any content if given the right context and environment to do so. In that paper, he outlined five major variables that affect whether or not you've created a mastery learning environment. The first was the student's aptitude for the content they were learning. The second was the quality of the teacher's instruction. The third was the ability of the student to understand that instruction. Fourth was the child's perseverance in learning that new content. And the fifth and final variable was the amount of time that was afforded to the child to learn that content. Over the last 50 years or so, this has proven to be more than just a nice thought. Bloom's theory has been analyzed over, in over 279 studies, and that meta-analysis is found in over 90% of them, it has led to direct improvements in student outcomes. And so, on top of that, Mastery learning also affects students with special needs, where the outcomes are actually higher in this area. Last, but certainly not least, students' affect is approved in an environment where mastery learning is present. And so if mastery learning is so amazing, if it's so effective, why is it not used more? And the answer to this question is simply because it's hard. It's very difficult to create that type of environment. First, you need to make sure that students have access to the right content and all the right support depending on their individual concerns and struggles with that content. And then you also need to make sure that that child is engaged enough that they actually care to learn it. In a classroom of 25, 30, or even more students, this is a monumental challenge. And so trying to implement this is something that teachers day to day struggle with. Fortunately, it's something that technology is uniquely suited to solve. More specifically, digital game-based learning is a powerful way to make sure that students are engaged enough that software can adapt to their individual needs. More specifically, by creating these living online worlds, you can make sure that students log in consistently and over time the software builds an understanding of their unique strengths and areas for improvement. Digital game-based learning is more than just a way to implement mastery learning though. Given the popularity of video games, it's also been studied in its own right. More specifically, research has shown that pre-adolescent students play between four and six hours of video games every single day. And so whether or not a game is actually engaging was never really a question. The big question is, does it lead to educational outcomes? In doing research reviews, we found that the answer is absolutely yes. Digital game-based learning has been strongly correlated with improving student test scores. The reason that this is important is that if you combine it with mastery learning, students' attitudes improve, and ultimately, their ability to succeed in life is strengthened. At Prodigy, our goal is to make sure that we combine these best research practices into a product that drives unparalleled outcomes. And so now up until this point, I've talked about research in more of the theoretical sense. I wanna dive into a couple examples so you understand how it works in practice. More specifically, when catering to an individual child's aptitudes, we make sure that every single skill has personalized help content. If a child is struggling, they have the ability to play video lessons, rewind them, pause them, and focus on their unique challenges so that they can ultimately succeed with it. In the case of perseverance, digital game-based learning is the ideal implementation to make sure that students are excited and continue to engage. In the case of Prodigy, when students play, the very first thing that they do is create their own character. They start at level one, but then as they play through that content, they automatically start leveling up. They can play alongside their friends, learn with their classmates, and ultimately they have reasons to come back and want to continue learn. 
The reason that's important is when the math content inevitably becomes difficult, students don't disengage. They persevere. And specifically in Prodigy, what we've done is we've made sure that when a child makes a mistake, they're given a second chance. They, they make, we make sure that they have a chance to look at what they've done wrong and correct it. Because at Prodigy, we don't want mistakes to be a scary thing. We want students to understand that they're a necessary part of the learning journey. And so from day one, we build them up, we engage them, and we build this belief that if I persevere, if I continue to struggle, I will learn. Last, but certainly not least, it comes to making sure that students have the time available for learning. And so for that, Prodigy was built to make sure that the game automatically adapts to each child's individual strengths. If a child's strong, if they're a high performer, we automatically skip forward to content that can challenge them. If they're struggling, we make sure that we spend the requisite time giving them the help they need, and if they still can't access it, we'll automatically drop back to prerequisite skills. Combined, what this ends up meaning is that Prodigy helps drive unparalleled outcomes. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because we believe that education is a basic human right. We want to make sure that access to high quality education content is something that every single child has. And so at Prodigy, we've tried to combine the best research backed software with the best technology so that we can make sure that everybody has access. Our content is free and free forever. And that's because we want to make sure that if you combine amazing educators with access to technology, we can build a better future together. Thank you for your time.